Welcome to worship this morning at Augustana Lutheran Church in Denver. We welcome our friends and members and those around the country who are joining us for our online worship services during this time. Today is Trinity Sunday around the Christian church in the world. It's a day when we as Christians reflect on God's presence with us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and what that means for us as we seek to be the people of God in this time and in this place in the world. This morning we are blessed by having a guest preacher for our Sunday. That guest preacher is Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. She has provided this sermon to all the ELCA congregations in the United States, knowing that most churches are worshiping online in one form or another these days. His sermon, her sermon is a reflection on current events in our country and also a reflection for us on the constant presence of the Holy Trinity with us. A little bit of information about her if you're not acquainted with her. Uh, she was re-elected to serve a six year, another six-year term as the presiding bishop in 2019 at the Churchwide Assembly. She's the fourth presiding bishop for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and was first elected in 2013. She earned a Master of Divinity degree from Harvard Divinity School. She was ordained in 1981 and served three different congregations in Ohio before being elected Bishop of the ELCA Northeastern Ohio Synod in 2006, and then elected as the presiding bishop for the first time in 2013. We welcome her as she shares God's word with us today. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. From Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters. 
that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind of which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had been done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth where they were created. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way, so also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how. But I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls 
for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit 
is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the Church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. 
Kisanet and Enoch, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son baptized into Christ? If so, answer by saying, I do. I do. As you bring Matthias to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help him grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer by saying, I do and I ask God to help me. I do and I ask God to help me. People of God, people of God, do you promise to support Matthias and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer by saying, we do and we ask God to help us. We do and we ask God to help us. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus reject sin and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? We, we renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that the one who is washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Matthias Enoch, you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Matthias with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen.
Matthias Enoch, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And now we light a candle symbolizing the light of Christ in Matthias's life. I'll hand that to you, Mama. And we say, let your, set, let, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And now we sing together to welcome the baptized. Raindrops, oceans, lakes, and rivers, welcome, child of God. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, welcome, child of God. When the world feels white around you, when the dark of night surrounds you, we are here to tend and guide you. Welcome, child of God. And now receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, I invite you to pray with me this morning for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. We pray especially for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and for our synod bishop, Jim, and the staff. With all the baptized, May we be strengthened to share the good news that the fullness of God dwells in and among us even when we are physically separated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond compassionately to those most in need. Further the work of advocates and people who pursue justice in ignored communities. Increase our desire for listening and collaboration amid rising tensions and mistrust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, you created us in your image. May we recognize your likeness in one another, especially those who find themselves isolated in this time. Protect vulnerable children and adults from domestic violence or neglect. Give courage to caregivers, health workers, and all who work to ensure the safety and well being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all those in need, especially those that we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your welcoming waters of baptism poured out on Matthias Hainok Johannes and Raina Violet Vanderwell. Bless their families and their lifelong journey of faith with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and the saints of our own lives especially those that we name now, Lehman Hogue, George Keyes, and Gaspar Perricone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those that are too deep for words, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Holy One, the Holy Three, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. <laughs>